right. So we left off um, with our DNA unwinding by DNA helicase. And in that unwinding, um, the DNA forms a replication fork that gets ready for replication. So the next step in a replication is there's an enzyme known as primase that starts a little RNA chain with a single RNA nucleotide and it adds RNA nucleotides one at a time using the parental DNA strand as a template. Um, it forms a short tiny primer and this is kind of like a starter strand of RNA that helps begin the replication process. Um, so it gets made by the primase and then the primer is a little strand of RNA used to start the replication process. Um, now the new DNA stand, strand will begin from the three prime end of the primer. Next up, um, there are different types of enzymes known as DNA polymerases, and there's a whole bunch of them. They're all numbered, but you just need to know what, in general, a DNA polymerase does. And they basically are responsible for catalyzing the elongation of DNA at the replication fork. So um, they require that RNA primer and then a template strand, which is formed by that unwinding. And what the DNA polymerase does is it adds nucleotides to the three prime end of the primer using the parental strand as a template um, and it'll just add the corresponding complementary nucleotides. So if the parental strand has a T, the polymerase is going to add an A and so on. And this happens very quickly. Um, one important thing to note is that the newly replicated DNA strands are formed um, in an anti-parallel um, way to the template strand. So if you remember, um, the two strands of DNA run in opposite directions. So because of this, um, it's also important to recall that DNA polymerase adds nucleotides only to the free three prime end of the growing strand. It can't add anything to the five prime strand. Um, and so these two strands, you can kind of think of them um, as running in one direction like a one-way street. And then that anti-parallelness causes them to kind of be like um, a divider in the middle of the street. So you can't really go in the opposite direction. And this plays a role in the way the DNA is replicated. Um, so because DNA polymerase cannot add nucleotides to the five prime end, it will only synthesize continuously in the five prime to three prime direction. Um, so this is um, what is known as the leading strand and the leading strand is synthesized by DNA polymerase continuously and just moves along the fork. So our leading strand moves very simply just in continuous order. New bases are added and you get your new replicated DNA. Um, so for example, um, our leading strand can be seen right here. Um, and it's going to zoom in. We're going to zoom into that strand. But notice there's here's the replication fork. And then our RNA primer is here. And then our DNA polymerase is slowly adding these bases um, to correspond with it, moving from 3 prime to 5 prime. Now, um, in the other, and so in, in this sense, you get continuous elongation of the DNA molecule. It doesn't really stop. Um, to elongate the other strand and build the other strand moving in the opposite direction, um, this strand is known as the lagging strand. And so what the DNA polymerase does is it works in the direction away from the replication fork. Um, and it synthesizes DNA discontinuously in small, short, discontinuous sequences of nucleotides. So um, the new nucleotides are added to the three prime end by DNA polymerase on the lagging strand. And after a certain amount of time, um, it cuts off and it will go and um, start another new segment. Um, and those segments are known as the Okazaki fragments. So um, basically you end up with a series of fragmented um, copied DNA. Um, then um, once that's done, the Okazaki fragments are made, the leading strand is finished, um, and the Okazaki fragments are finished on the lagging strand. The DNA polymerase removes the RNA primers and replaces um, those leftover nucleotides with DNA. And then finally, um, the remaining gaps are joined together by an enzyme known as DNA ligase.
um, and that joins the phosphate background bones of all the Okasaki fragments into a single continuous DNA strand. Um, so this kind of shows us what happens on the lagging strand um, at the and then at the and then at the end of DNA replication. So um, we've got our RNA primer. We form from five prime to three prime um, a little tiny uh, segment, which is an Okazaki fragment. Still, DNA polymerase is doing the job of adding the bases. Then the DNA polymerase finishes its segment. It detaches, and then um, we start. Uh, we see another primer forms, and we get another new Okasaki fragment. And DNA polymerase begins building that one. Um, this is the first fragment that we built. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. Once that's done, um, the DNA polymerase replaces any leftover places where bases weren't filled, um, that or where the primer was sitting. They replace with DNA. And then DNA ligase kind of comes across and forms bonds between the fragments so that they are all connected and form a single strand of DNA. Um, DNA also, it's very important that it not only gets replicated quickly, but also that it gets replicated accurately. So there's a few different methods that are used to proofread DNA as it's being made. Um, one is simply just proofreading, and in proofreading, um, that occurs right after the DNA polymerase um, inserts a nucleotide. Some proofreading happens, and if there's any incorrect nucleotides, those will usually be fixed almost immediately. After the DNA is finished um, and has been replicated, there's also a mismatch repair that goes on um, in your DNA where um, other enzymes can remove and replace any incorrect bases that have been um, put into um, the DNA um, resulting from replication errors. So um, what can happen um, if both of these um, are not fully checked or something goes wrong, occasionally something can slip through the cracks and you might end up with what's known as a mutation. Um, and so mutations can be a result of a variety of things, um, but essentially um, you want to avoid mutations if, if you can at all costs. So um, mismatch repair is one way, proofreading is another way, and then we have this one known as nucleotide excision repair where an enzyme known as nuclease can also cut out and replace damaged um, stretches of DNA, and that's usually after it's been created as well. But um, this mutation um, that can occur, any change um, that's permanent in the DNA sequence, um, does connect to big idea one and our ideas about evolution. So um, even though we aim for a perfect replication rate with no errors, it's not quite zero. And um, should a sequence change um, happen in a germ cell, which is used to um, which is passed on to the next generation, um, that sequence change may be permanent and can be passed on. Um, a lot of times we tend to think of mutations as a bad thing, um, but in actuality there are some beneficial mutations or depending on the environment, um, an organism may find that mutation beneficial and um, natural selection would then act upon it and potentially pass that mutation on um, eventually causing all the future offspring after many, many years to carry that trait um, that happens to be beneficial, but maybe originally started out as a mistake. And um, that is kind of how evolution begins. So um, that's where the DNA replication piece connects to big idea one. Um, finally, when we're talking about um, DNA and DNA replication, um, when we discuss um, the way that DNA is replicated. Um, keep in mind that um, for eukaryotic cells, remember the DNA is linear, it's not a circle. And so typically, um, the usual replication machinery and enzymes are not able to complete the very um, ends of the daughter strands at the five prime side. Um, so this would be this would what would happen if this continued was that if we kept replicating the DNA, we'd eventually get shorter and shorter DNA molecules with uneven ends. So um, to kind of combat that, eukaryotic DNA um, DNA molecules have special sequences at the end of their molecules of DNA, and these are special nucleotide sequences known as telomeres, and these kind of act as a buffer zone to prevent prevent 
uh, or to protect the organism's genes and prevent the erosion of DNA. Um, however, they don't completely prevent it, they just postpone it. So you can kind of see the telomeres are highlighted here um, and the orange. Um, you, they're right at the end of those chromosomes. Um, and so they don't um, totally prevent the shortening of DNA molecules, but they postpone it for a certain amount of time. And then um, once um, your cells have divided many, many times, um, your telomeres become shorter. So we are currently thinking that telomeres may play an important role in aging because as your cells divide many, many times, your telomeres become a lot shorter. Um, however, if that continued to happen, um, eventually um, the telomeres would be uh, would disappear from the re uh, repeated replication of our DNA, and we would no longer see them. And then eventually, some of our genes might start disappearing um, from those gametes. So we depend on this enzyme known as telomerase, which helps catalyze the lengthening of telomeres in germ cells and brings them back to their original length. So um, as cells divide more and more frequently, the telomeres get shorter, but then tele, tele, uh, telomer, telomerase, <laughs> sorry, the enzyme telomerase catalyzes the lengthening of these telomeres and brings them back to their normal size. Um, it is also, we think, um, potentially useful um, for cancer therapy um, because to, while telomerase is not active in many of our regular human somatic cells, um, it does seem that it is hap um, present in cancer cells, which cause the cancer cells to be able to continue to replicate and um, replicate the full amount of DNA. So that's something that we're looking at for cancer therapy. Um, and then very quickly, I'm going to just discuss a few important concepts in 13-3. So um, if you recall, the bacterial chromosome is a double-stranded circular DNA molecule with a small amount of protein. Um, in contrast, our eukaryotic chromosomes have linear DNA molecules that have a large amount of protein. Um, and so that's kind of what our chromosomes are. They're a packaging of DNA and protein together. Um, so in the bacterium, um, the, you know that there's no nucleus, um, the DNA is just free-floating, but typically it gets coiled and compacted very, very into a very, very tiny um, piece, kind of looking like spaghetti, and this is known as the nucleoid. Um, in contrast, um, in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells, we typically find chromatin, which is a combination of our linear DNA and the protein. And um, basically, chromatin fits into our nucleus because it gets un packaged very, very tightly and very, very densely. And if you were actually to unwind all of this DNA, um, you would find that it actually takes up a lot of space, but because of its unique packaging, it's able to fit in our cells. Um, so we're just going to go over a couple of the ways that it gets packaged, but um, this you probably would recognize this is the chromosome as we see it in metaphase, but typically in interphase when the cell is um, growing and changing and getting ready to re replicate, it's found as chromatin, which is a little bit more of that like spaghetti form. Um, there are certain proteins called histones, and they are responsible for packaging the DNA and the chromatin. Um, and the histones, um, you can see here, they are the ones that are packaging that up. And then um, once they've packaged the DNA, um, it forms something known as a nucleosome. And the nucleosome are sometimes referred to as beads on a string. Um, so each bead is a nucleosome, and then the string is like um, the linker DNA that links all these um, nucleosomes together. And um, they um, consist of a couple of different histones in those nucleosomes. Um, so that's really all you need to know about the chromosomes at this point. We're going to come back to them in a future lecture when we start talking about heredity and inheritance, but that's all that you need to know for this one.